Hello! It is a very exciting day because the long list for the International Booker Prize has just been announced. And I know it's been quite a couple of weeks for book prize announcements, but this is honestly one of my favorite awards. And I'll tell you why, because as a reader, I love that books show me so many different people and places that I'll probably never encounter in my real life. And this is what this book award is designed to do. It takes you around the world, showing you many cultures and points of view from so many different countries. And in doing so, how we as people have many differences, but also points of connection and commonalities, which we might not realize on the, the surface. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And it sounds quite schmaltzy, but it's, it's why I love reading so much. Uh, it's why I have a full-time job and a busy life, but I still spend so much time reading and discussing books. Uh, it is enlightening and educational, but also really enjoyable and fun. Uh, so with that preamble over, um, if you've not followed uh, this award before, uh, it differs from the Booker Prize in that it awards the single finest book uh, translated into English and published in the UK or Ireland in the past year. And these are the 13 books uh, which have been listed for this year's prize. And uh, these 13 different books take us to 13 different countries. And uh, the Booker Prize has kindly sent me copies of all of these books. So I'm going to give an overview and some interesting uh, information about all these different uh, titles and authors. But also, the Booker is sponsoring me to follow this award. So I'm going to uh, follow it quite closely uh, this year. And that's, that's a wonderful thing, because like I said, it, it honestly is one of my favorite book awards. Um, I would love it if you joined me on this journey reading some or all of these books, which will take us uh, from Sweden to Ukraine to China to South Korea uh, to Mexico to the Ivory Coast to Germany, all over the world, so many different stories, uh, really exciting. Um, so I'm going to give uh, a bit more information and overview uh, about the prize and this year's prize and, uh, and these books as a whole before going into each title individually. Now, this is a book prize which is awarded annually. Last year's winner was Tomb of Sand by Geetanjali Shri, translated by Daisy Rockwell, which was such a wild epic that was both poignant and oftentimes very funny, absolutely fascinating book. The winners of the award receive £50,000, which is divided equally between the author and translator, uh, which is a really lovely thing. Uh, the shortlist for this year's award is going to be announced on April 18th, and then the winner will be announced on May 23rd. Now, the chair of judges for this year's prize is the French author Leila Slimani, uh, who wrote the very popular novel Lullaby, um, also that went under the, the title The Perfect Nanny in um, some other countries. Uh, she also wrote the novel Adele, as well as uh, other books. Also on the judges is uh, Tan Tuan En, uh, the author of The Garden of Evening Mist and uh, the, the Gift of Rain. Um, so really interesting group of judges for this year's prize. Looking at the nationalities of the different books included, there are 13 different countries represented. Uh, seven of those are from European countries. Uh, three are from Asia. Uh, so there is China, South Korea, and India. Uh, there are two uh, from North America, um, from Mexico and the Caribbean island of Guadalajara. The loop and then there is one from Africa, from the Ivory Coast. There are eight male authors and five female authors. The shortest book on the list is 105 pages, and then the longest novel on the list is 596 pages. On a practical note, all of these books, except for two, have already been published here in the UK. I don't know about other countries and territories uh, that may differ. And the, the two books um, which haven't been published yet are While We Were Dreaming, um, this big mighty book, which is going to be published on March 30th, and then 
Jimi Hendrix, Live in Lviv, uh, unfortunately isn't going to be published until April 27th, um, which is actually after the shortlist announcement is made. Um, but that's because the eligibility for books for this year's award goes up until the end of April. Now, sometimes publishers, when their books have been listed for a prize, they will bring forward the publication date. So hopefully that'll happen. But yeah, there's still a lot of other reading to get along with in the meantime. Now to look at these books individually, first off there is Boulder by Eva Baltazar, uh, translated from the Catalan by Julia Sanchez. And this is a novel about two women that meet on a ship. They decide to settle down as a couple in Reykjavik. Uh, one really wants to have a baby and the other woman just kind of goes along with it uh, but has very ambiguous feelings about motherhood and parenting. Um, so it shows this dynamic in a relationship and the tensions that can arise um, when issues about bearing children uh, come up. And But it shows it from a new angle. Now, Eva Baltazar, um, she's a uh, writer and a, and a poet. Um, I feel a kind of kinship with her because she was born exactly one week before I was. Um, so that's kind of a fun fact. And uh, the author, Fernanda Melchor, who was previously uh, listed for the Booker International Prize and whose books I love, um, she gave an endorsement uh, for this in which she says, it is exquisite, dark, and unconventional. Eva Baltazar turns intimacy into a wild adventure. And uh, this is the second book in a triptych of books the author has planned to be written from the points of view of of women to show their different universes, but I don't think these uh, books are sort of connected with each other in terms of like character or story. Um, it's more just about this thematic connection. The Gospel According to the New World by Marissa Conde, translated from the French by Richard Philcox. This is about a messianic figure that is born in contemporary Martinique, uh, who is abandoned as a baby, but found and raised. And it's said of him that he is going to change the world. So it follows his adventures and difficulties he encounters. Uh, Marissa Conde is a novelist and critic and playwright who often writes about the African diaspora that resulted from colonialism and slavery in the Caribbean. And uh, I've often um, heard her tipped as like a possible Nobel Prize candidate. And I've always meant to, to read her books, but, um, but never have before, so I'm really eager to get to this. Standing Heavy by Gauze, translated from the French by Frank Wynne. In three different periods of time, it follows three different men from the Ivory Coast who are employed as undocumented workers in Paris as security guards. Uh, it uses humor and satire to explore France's legacy of colonialism and racial prejudice and modern day capitalism through the perspectives of black men. Gauze is the pen name of Patrick Armand Gabaka Brede, uh, who is also a photographer as well as a writer and an editor of a satirical newspaper in the Ivory Coast. Time Shelter by Georgi Gospodinov, and it's translated from the Bulgarian by Angela Rodel. Uh, this is about an enigmatic man that opens a clinic of the past uh, for people that are suffering from Alzheimer's disease uh, on different floors of this clinic. Different decades of time are represented in highly accurate detail and it's meant to provide comfort uh, for these patients um, to immerse themselves in the past. Um, but as it is completed, uh, people who are healthy uh, find themselves wanting to take shelter in these different floors and periods of time to escape from present day circumstances. Gospodinov is a highly respected Bulgarian writer, poet, and playwright who's produced many books. And uh, this title comes with an endorsement uh, from a uh, former International Booker Prize winner, Olga Tokorczyk, uh, who says, 
Each page comes as a surprise so that you never know where the author is going to take you next. I've put it on a special shelf in my library that I reserve for books that can never be fully exhausted, books that demand to be revisited every now and then. And I always think that's a lovely endorsement of it. it's a book that you want to go back to. Um, I've seen several people tip this as a possibility for this year's long list, and here it is actually up for the award. Is Mother Dead by Vigdis Hjorth, uh, translated from the Norwegian by Charlotte Barslund. This is about an artist who returns to her native Norway for a retrospective of her career. Her controversial artwork often deals with motherhood, and this creates a rift between the artist and her own mother. Now, Hjorth's previous novel, Will and Testament, uh, was also quite controversial in that her family thought it was a bit too autobiographical for their comfort. Um, so this novel is obviously dealing with similar issues. Um, it's meant to be quite suspenseful as well as exploring the personal price for artistic freedom. Ninth Building by Zhou Jinza, translated by Jeremy Tien. This is a collection of vignettes which draw upon the author's own experiences growing up during the cultural revolution, first as a boy in Beijing and then as a teenager exiled in the countryside. I've heard that it is uh, presented as a novel, but it's more like a collection of interconnected short stories, which is actually my favorite kind of fiction. Uh, the author is a very respected poet, uh, playwright, screenwriter, and also a founder of a theater collective. Jimi Hendrix, Live in Lviv by Andrei Kirchhoff, translated from the Russian by Ruben Woolley. This is a novel of humor and sly magical realism, which follows a group of misfits in Lviv who investigate a series of anomalies um, that baffle people in that city. Uh, Kirchhoff has been described by newspapers um, alternately as uh, Ukraine's greatest living writer and also a Ukrainian Murakami. He's the author of 19 novels as well as being a public intellectual and a screenwriter who's often known for writing with black humor about post-Soviet reality. I I'm really keen to read more fiction and books set in the Ukraine given that recently uh, uh, it's been one year since Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, so I really want to get a more like personal take on this country, which is often in the news and which is still experiencing such harrowing conflict. The Birthday Party by Laurent Monvignier, translated from the French by Daniel Levin Becker. In a small, isolated French hamlet, a man plans a surprise party for his wife's 40th birthday, uh, but inexplicable events cause disruption in this quiet hamlet, and very sinister events follow on from that. Uh, this is meant to be a very suspenseful novel that moves from one consciousness to another over the course of a day. Uh, it comes with an endorsement from the author John McGregor, who says, The birthday party is a strange and marvelous thing, a thriller in slow motion. The tension builds so patiently that you almost miss it with the results that when shocking events occur, it's too late to turn away. This is a dark and discomforting work of beauty and violence made all the more disturbing by its idyllic setting. Monvignier uh, originally studied visual arts, but he eventually became a writer um, who has produced many novels and has won multiple awards in France. While We Were Dreaming by Clemens Meyer, translated by Katie Derbyshire, uh, this is a coming-of-age tale set in the wake of the Berlin Wall coming down in 1989, and it follows four adolescent boys who dream of a better life. Meyer has written two novels, and his second novel, Bricks and Mortar, was also published previously by Fitzcarraldo Editions and that novel was also previously listed for the International Booker Prize. Uh, but confusingly, this was actually the first 
novel that he wrote, um, and it was originally published in 2006, but it's only just been translated and published in English. It's really interesting with this award how um, some authors might have originally published these books many years ago, but now uh, these novels are getting kind of a second life. Meyer previously worked as a construction worker and forklift driver before he became a writer, and he is now also a screenwriter and an actor. Pyre by Puramal Murrigan, translated from the Tamil by Anuradhan Vasudevan. This is about a young couple who meet and fall in love in a small southern Indian town, uh, but they are from different castes, and this means that they uh, encounter violence and social exclusion amongst their community. Murugan is a scholar and literary chronicler who has written uh, many novels, and he's been twice listed for the National Book Award for translation. Well, by Chian Myon Kwan, translated by Chi Yun Kim, this is a multi generational tale that blends fable, farce, and fantasy about tycoons, cinephiles, and ghosts. Uh, it sounds really intriguing. Uh, it's considered a contemporary classic in South Korea, where it was first published in 2003. So again, another book that's getting very much a uh, second life. But I've heard uh, quite mixed things uh, about this novel, but I am really intrigued to see what it's all about. Still Born by Guadalupe Natel, translated by Rosalind Harvey. This is about two women that have been close friends for a really long time, and they both agreed from an early age that they were disinclined to ever bear children. But as time goes on, one of them develops very maternal feelings towards a neighbor's son, and the other willingly conceives uh, only to encounter complications then. So it's interesting how how uh, this theme about like ambivalence of motherhood runs both uh, in this novel as well as in Boulder, um, but this approaches it from a very different angle. Now, I've seen a number of people um, predict that this will be on the, the long list, and here it is. And also, uh, a lot of people predicted that Mariana Enrique's Our Share of Night um, would be on this long list, um, though it hasn't made the, the list. But uh, I saw a very interesting conversation between Guadalupe Natal and Mariana Enriquez on YouTube, so I'll put a link to that uh, discussion below. And finally, there is A System So Magnificent It Is Blinding by Amanda Svensson, and it is translated by Nicola Smalley. Uh, this is a family saga about triplets uh, that are born in 1989, and just as they are born, their father reveals that he's having an affair, and pandemonium ensues. Then many years later, uh, these triplets are living very different lives from each other, including one that has moved to Easter Island to join a doomsday cult. Uh, but then circumstances mean that they are forced to reunite, and this causes them to uh, explore questions to do with free will and forgiveness. Svensson is the author of three books, and Nicholas Smalley was previously listed for the International Booker Prize for translating the novel Wretchedness, and I'm so happy to see her listed again. I'm lucky enough to have encountered her um, a few times. I remember um, bumping into her once at the Edinburgh Book Festival, and we had a really lovely long chat. Um, she's so dedicated to translated books, and she's, she's worked worked for the great publisher and other stories. And, and I think that's another thing that I love so much about this book prize is that it is often like, made up and, and people that are listed um, who are so passionate about translated literature and bringing it into English. And often many of the books are from like small publishing houses that take a chance on a lot of these books that other larger publishers don't, uh, don't publish. And so, yeah, it's really great to, to see them being honored in this way. There we have it, all of the books. Now, very unusually this year, I've not yet read 
any of these titles. Um, usually, when I followed this prize in the, the past, I've at least read one or two, and, and I made some very like quick-fire predictions uh, last week about what we would see listed. Didn't get any of them right, uh, but lots of books that I'm really keen to explore and, and try out. I'm, I'm like at a kid at Christmas. I don't really know where to start. Uh, I, I am quite keen on Boulder and, uh, and also Time Shelter, because I've heard so many great things about it. But it's difficult to know. Do I start with a short one or try to tackle one of the longer ones at, at first? Um, I'm not really sure. But I'd love to know which of these books you're really interested in reading. Uh, like I said, the shortlist is going to be announced on April 18th. So I'm sure we'll have lots of really great discussion and debate around all of these different books. I'd love to hear about your reading plans in the comments below and your reaction to this long list and, and all of the, the books. Uh, also, if there are any titles you were hoping to see long listed, um, which didn't make the, the cut, I, I looked at a number of different people's predictions. And I think most only got maybe like two or three books correct in what they um, predicted. Uh, but it's very difficult to, to try to guess what is actually going to be on the, the long list. But we have a lot of great books to choose from. I'm excited to dive in now. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well and reading good things. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.